What's up, everybody? <laughs> Welcome to the Savage Land. Welcome to another episode of Soapbox. Pretty much weekly commentary here on my channel uh, where we talk about various uh, hot topics throughout the community. Just a little time for me to talk, man, and just uh, basically run my mouth. I'm pretty sure everybody who's been here who's been here. So we're going to start cutting that, that spill, spill a little short, shall we? Um, and also, um, we're going to be talking about one of my favorite topics that we all know if you've been on my channel is G.I. Joe. And we got G.I. Joe is G.I. Joe. Another episode of that on here, man. So uh, we got a few things this week, man. A few little juicy, juicy little topics. So uh, let's not waste any more time and let's get right into it. All right. Up first, we got a juicy, juicy topic that's been up all week. And it's Todd McFarlane. Ooh, McFarlane, you... You dirty rat, you dirty rat, you did a price hike. And uh, basically I got my opinion on it. I really don't give a shit. I'm, I'm just go ahead and just tell you out the gate. I, I don't, I don't give a fuck uh, about, about uh, talking about a McFarlane price hike. Why would I talk about dog shit, hiking dog shit? I, I, I don't care, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and let's be honest with you. McFarlane is the uh, ugly duckling, the bastard child of action figure collecting. I mean, he has his fans. I will uh, give this kid a, a Josh from Before Figs. He's dedicated to McFarlane. You can tell he is. That's all he collects. But he, uh, I think, is in a, a small percentage of the community. Now, do I get McFarlane? Yes, I do. Um, I cherry pick. And I'm a real collector. I'm really in the trenches. I'm really in the aisles. I'm really dealing with different toys. Um, and I, just from my standpoint, and I know a lot of people uh, feel the same way I do, even though I'm a minority now talking. Just one person versus a couple hundred or even if you get to a thousand views of people who see this um, uh, thinks, man. But we all know McFarlane's like, whatever. Like, me, I don't care because you shouldn't even pay $20 for that bullshit. To be quite honest with you, man. I mean, I, I, I cherry pick. Now, the, uh, the, uh, what's that, uh, Violator? That's a great figure, man. That's a great figure. Even for 50 bucks or whatever you had it up there for. I brought mine for 29 Because we all know McFarlane goes on sale before this, uh, clearance crisis. And, uh, the Swamp Thing is actually a good figure. But other than that, man, it, come on, man. Come on, man. Dude can't get it right to save his life. I, I, am I the only one wishing he would lose that license and let another company get that so they can try to do something with that? Because he, he's doing a, 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 a crazy disservice right now. He, he blocking blessings right now of great uh, DC characters we could get from another company. Uh, and he's over here bullshitting. But let's get to the main uh, subject. I guess it's uh, World Infinite Crisis. And, and if I get shit wrong, I've never came on this channel thinking I was a guru at anything. I'm just a regular collector, real passionate about it, and I think uh, I, I just want my voice to be heard, and I want to have fun on camera. But, uh, Infinite Crisis, DC. I'm not a big DC guy. I'm a Marvel guy. Um, and even slimmed down in that. X-Men, Wolverine type stuff. But uh, these four figures are up there. I guess they're figures everybody's been kind of waiting on. And I'm speaking from this standpoint because I don't want to speak one-sided because I don't give a shit really like that. But, um, $40 a piece. I've seen the McFarlane gold labels go up to... $30 and I haven't brought a, a gold label and, and God knows when platinum label whatever the shit is I don't even know why it's labeled different but you're gonna label dog shit differently like why would you do that just call it dog shit you know what I'm saying like the ones I've gotten been in Walmart that I've randomly came across was like you know what I'll get this I think Azrael Batman uh and, well the uh the one where he got his back broke, the blue and gray uh, suit, and I came across somebody else that was like a gold label. Um, but it's just stuff I really don't care about and pass up. But they were, they start, they, they jumped up to $30. I don't even know, I, I don't even care. <laughs> I don't know how many times I'm gonna say this while I report on this. I don't even care. But these figures jumped up to 40. One thing, they're exclusive to uh, his, um, his online store. So if you want them, you just go to the store and get them. And this is the part I don't understand. It has a bunch of promo codes that you can get to get that shave down. Man, just, just give, them, give them what they want, man. Damn, give them the figures for $24, be done with them. Because the rumors going around, which I seen from JC, I believe Robo said something about it the other day, is that it was supposed to go to like a Target and do that stupid spread. And like everything he does is like, what the fuck are you doing, man? This wave that gets spread it out throughout a year and shit just to build a, a bullshit uh, build a figure, basically. So it was supposed to do that, but I guess they didn't want it. And, 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 it, and it shows you. Even as collectors, voices need to be heard. But my God, honest opinion on how the toy industry goes, which like any other industry, whether you're serving food, anything, products, 
if you're not doing right, that shit gonna come right back around to you. Because your customers, after a while, they're gonna be like, I ain't fucking with that, then the word gonna spread. Even though we got the internet, ain't nothing fa faster than the damn word on the street. I mean, that shit has been working for centuries. <laughs> shit. Uh, what's to get uh, the mark, uh, whatever it was, who wrote Paul Revere. Word on the motherfucking street. It, it's been going on for centuries. So it's going to travel regardless and get back. And that's what happened with all these toy clearances. One, they overproduced because they're stupid as fuck. And then, secondly, it was too much. Too many products, too much. So it came back on a clearance run. And that's pretty much what's going to happen to this. Now, I don't know too much, but the Spectre guy looks pretty dope. If I was going to get any character, I would get him. And lo and behold, he sold out. And you know why he sold out? Because of guys like... Josh from Before Figs, he might say it sucks. I don't even know if this guy brought it. I'm just using him because he's the only child I know that only just dudes review on McFarlane. Um, he's going to go get that because he wants that. And more like, yo, go get it, man, if you want it, man. I would never, ever tell you to not uh, go get something if you want it. And that shit is sold out to true collectors. Even I think Robo had said something about uh, of that yesterday, man, which I'm not following his lead, but I'm just looking. And I feel the same way. Like, if you really want that, like, that's the best looking figure to me. Like, it's sold out. But I think what a cool thing, what might happen is, all the rest of them figures gonna sit. And you know McFarlane, fuck this. <laughs> I will give him that. He's a hustler. Like, when that product came over, man, dump that shit, man. Dump that shit. I got to re-up. You know what I'm saying? So, I think he will do that. And that's a cool thing. But, you kind of get an incomplete uh, wave. But, it's already dog shit anyway, man. And, I, and, 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 to, and to be quite honest with you, um... McFarlane's getting price hikes just like everybody else, so we're gonna see how, how it go, man, with that, uh, but I think that this is just a special uh, situation, but it's caused an uproar in the community, and I just wanted to put my partake on it, like, if you want that shit, like, go buy that stupid shit, <laughs> and most people already know, because I know most people watching things like me, because I'm I've kind of getting a vibe of who I, who I kind of communicate, man, they don't give a shit anyway, man, I'm gonna show you how much I don't give a shit, and I ain't gonna say another damn thing about it, goodbye. Two piggyback on a, another company that's on some stupid shit sometimes I actually like them uh, more than McFarlane is the uh, news about Super 7 and the most important thing which uh, a lot of stuff they do I don't care about uh, no I wouldn't say that I wouldn't say that a lot of stuff they do I don't get there is some stuff in there I do care about Turtles uh, the Thundercats line but I only went so far with that and there's a few other things I see like okay I I'm thinking about it uh, but the uh, one thing was the Simpsons looks like they lost a Disney license now as far as all the other stuff they make they look like they're pretty cool but uh, they lost their Disney license um, and so they can't uh, produce because they do stuff like um, like Pinocchio and shit like that you know what I'm saying like crazy stuff man like just really kind of almost going overboard man I think they spread themselves thin a little too much man and uh Disney actually owns The Simpsons, and this is the one that kind of got everybody, uh, not necessarily in an uproar, but just like, well, that sucked, and it, and it does, and the reason why, because they chose to not do main characters and kind of spread that line thin, I mean, The Simpsons has been on for over 30 years, and you're talking about almost look like they're trying to uh, do every character that's almost made on there, and kind of leave the family to kind of sprinkle throughout with, within like they had forever. We don't know their business uh, uh, tactics unless somebody leaks it, you know, unless they got a snitch and anything. That's how people get information here, that the dark net or whatever, you know, just leaks or whatnot. But we didn't know that. We thought they would have it forever. You know, it's cool. But a lot of people forget uh, The Simpsons is owned by Disney. I know I do. You know what I'm saying? I just always think of Fox, but Disney acquired Fox, you know, at the end of the day. But um, with that, they spread it out then. They lost their license. How? I, I don't know. This, this shit ain't moving like that, I guess. And even with the Simpsons line, it's not a heavy mover, but people actually do care about the Simpsons. Uh, for one, and I keep looking at this Mo, I'm going to grab him. For one, um, these figures, I, I would say Mo is, Mo is old, not necessarily overpriced to me, but you get, a, you get a lot of stuff with him. What I would say is he doesn't feel like a Super 7 that I paid $55 for before, especially with like Ninja Turtles, like Bebop, Rocksteady. When they first came out here, I was like, damn, now, now this is this is a $50, but they were $45, I believe. $50, $45 figure right here, like, yeah, I got this. This doesn't really feel like that. It's not necessarily hollow, but it's not really heavy. Um, and the reason why I say that, because I just got the Biggie. I'm doing a review on him now, and that Biggie feels quality. That Biggie feels like it got, it got some girth on it. It's a nice uh, figure, but the Simpsons are a little bit different 
Now, you got people like me who waited to uh, the, you know, about a year after these came out to try to catch them on clearance. And I called Mo for like $28. I think I think that's worth it. He comes with three head scopes. He's got plenty of accessories, man. Uh, but at the end of the day, I mean, it, it, it's, it's a Simpson figure. I mean, it's not nothing too much uh, to this. So, with that being said, uh... $28, I think, is in, in the right spot. For one thing, it's overpriced, and like I said, they spread it out. Now, Mo, to me, why I got Mo? Mo is a main character. He's an offset main character, but he's not part of the main family. So, when you get somebody like Mo, and this is a double edged sword, because now that the line is cut off, they have some main characters, but they're not main, and then they got a lot of offspring characters that be kind of sitting on the shelf by themselves. Like Duffman, like, I, I, I still want that figure. Um, Duffman can sit on a shelf by itself and you're not going to ask, well, where's everybody else at? Or the Duff Dog or whatever that is. Mo can sit on a shelf by himself with his accessories and hold his own. The people who can't sit on the shelf by themselves are the mainline Simpsons. That's Homer, Bart, Marge, Maggie, Lisa. Maybe some together. Homer and Bart. Maybe Maggie and Marge. Bart and Lisa. But you can't have really Homer and Maggie. You're going to ask like, where the fuck is the rest of the family at? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Even with any of them. Even if you see Bart and Homer. But like, now that I say that, you could, you could, you could pull that off. But still, you're going to be like, well, the, did they come out with the rest of them? If you don't know anything about them. Did you get the rest of them? Do you plan on getting the rest of them? No, man. They closed the line down. Aww. And that's all you got to say. You know what I'm saying? But luckily, they did not do that. What they have is a lot of standoffish characters. And even with... The Homer that's out, the astronaut Homer, he can stand alone by by himself. They're not going to ask, well, where's the rest of the family at in astronaut gear? He can sit up there by himself and hold his own. The Bart man, I still want that. I probably still will grab that, being that the line is closing. Um, I'm not even wait on clearance. Just go ahead and just pay it, just to have it, maybe. But it can stand alone on his own because it's Bart dressed up in a costume. So like I said, it's a double-edged sword. They shot themselves in the foot. The one thing I will say is, if these two ways had all mainline characters, that shit will be sold out everywhere right now because people will be like, oh shit, I gotta get to the <laughs> to the computer and put their orders in because they know the line's not being made no more and you got a full set of Simpsons family who are pretty large. They're not small figures. This is a this is just as tall as a G.I. Joe and, and, and double the uh, girth of a G.I. Joe. So it's got a nice present. They really missed a shot right there because I really eventually for myself, like 10 years later, we'll like to see like a hundred of these on my shelf just that I randomly cherry pick. And you know how the Simpsons look once they start standing out in a big crowd. That shit, is, that shit is impressive. It's imposing looking, man. So a failed miss, but I don't know. Super 7 really be on some hit and miss shit right now. I don't know don't know how they future gonna go. Them, really, them, them Joes really need to save their ass. The th that three and three quarter Joes they come out with, if that don't save their ass, I, I don't know about Super 7. I, I really don't know. They might have to go back to uh, publication. All right, now let's get into some fun news. <laughs> I don't want to talk about other stupid ass shit, man. But uh, let's uh, talk about the Wolverine 2 pack. Uh, the Armored Psylocke and Wolverine uh, patch. Is that patch? I'm not too sure. It, it, it's from the uh, Wolverine Volume 2. The, the first couple of issue runs, he was in like kind of like that all black kind of like ninja uh, outfit, man. And to be honest with you, I wasn't really thinking about it too much. This is one of the packs. Uh, the uh, Lalandra and Brood is one pack. I'm like, eh, I don't know. But I still might get it just to be a Wolverine completionist. It's still great figures. I'm, I'm just not personally interested in them. But this Psylocke, the more and more I look at that shit, the more and more I don't want to look at it. It's just pissing me off like so bad every time it comes up and the reason why it's pissing me off because I want it I didn't want it at first but now I want it. I want this shit I don't know why I want it but Lilandra uh, uh, Silo looks good I like Wolverine that all black it's another Wolverine to my addition he's not in a blue and yellow suit he's not in a brown and yellow suit he's actually a good looking figure with some decent head scopes and a black ninja suit from the Wolverine volume that I read that I read and collected that is my lead into X-Men and comic book reading I'm mostly Wolverine volume too that's what i read as a kid I, I really didn't even spread across the rest of the x books i did a little bit but not like that if it ain't wolverine i ain't fucking with you um so that's basically where i'm at but this uh pack is up for pre-order it came up this week 
another great looking pack I would say and Psylocke I think if she moves good and decent I just don't like the cape on I hate a plastic cape but if she's a, a, a good moving figure she could be a, a sleeper in, in that two pack man but it's up for pre-order pretty much all across the board uh, I think it's about $49.99 for it so uh, if you want that grab that Valiverse Vanguard Jeep is up finally for real pre-order now um, $189 for it um, it says it's due to ship out in July, okay? So it's up for now. You can put your uh, place order in. I don't know if that Valiverse is actually taking money or whole, uh, waiting until it actually ships. If, if, if it's waiting until it actually ships, that's great. You know what I'm saying? Because if it's holding money, it's just the same as, as a as a HasLab. But I don't I don't think he would do that. I, I think if it's been this long since he's waited, he can probably just get his pre-orders in and then uh, charge you. Um, once once it comes through but if anybody knows you feel free to put that in the comments but with these trucks on a serious note they actually do look good is it for me still i don't know but then again it's coming at a time when i it might be a down time for me but i don't know that's at san diego comic-con time so i don't i don't know but it's months down the road and might be a time where i want to fuck with it be honest with you like i said it's not a bad looking truck uh, i like the way it looks <laughs> the only biggest thing if it's out of scaling what can I really do with it besides have it? You know what I'm saying? Because I, sometimes shit, I might want my Joes riding in a regular looking truck. Shit, I wanted to put them in that fucking uh, in, in that Raymond toy or or, or that uh, uh has uh that has lab. I would have put them in that fucking Challenger all day. You know what I'm saying? So on that end, this this is this is not too far from that. It's actually more correct to what I want to get, man. Uh, so it's a decent looking toy. I don't know about the pricing on it now because things have changed. This shit is like the stock market. This shit has been going up and down emotionally as far as vehicle-wise in the past year and a half. And now with the vamp coming out and other little things that's out, like it's in a middle thing. Like, do I want to uh, pay for this? It has a lot of features. The doors come off of it. Um, it's got a guy uh, trigger shooting out the back. I think that looks dope. The missiles on there look cool. And if you want to strip down, shit can just be, you know what I'm saying, a fly little truck. You can mob and put in a city scene. So. It's got plenty of options. Uh, so, but the cool thing about, like I said, it's, it's not like okay, if you don't get this, then fuck you. And uh, my, in that case, I would have been like, fuck you. <laughs> I don't want it. You know what I'm saying? But it gives you the chance, which is a smart move because everybody's not like, oh shit, the vamp. Give me. You know what I'm saying? This, you got people that's in a gray area with Valiverse, and you got the people that's diehard that's gonna go for it. Then you got the people that's like, fuck you. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, so to leave it open to leave it a, to availability, to leave it to a mind change, uh, to leave it to where people can still get it, bring it back, your partner can see it, you can take it to a convention and still, when somebody get home or at that convention, like, damn, I like that, let me order that. Smart move, smart move, if, they, if they're if doing it that way. Uh, with, with, with the, with the pre-order and afterwards, will it still be up there? So, if you want it, it's finally up for pre-order, go to the Valiverse site, you can get $189, Vanguard. And last on my community, man, is a guy named Kaiju Daddy. Um, he uh, has a Boston accent, and I believe he's somewhere in Japan. I don't know if he's in the military or something, but first time I ever came across his channel. He had an interesting title that I gravitated towards. What Mayfax will be coming out for this year? Reissues. And I'm like, ooh, automatically I'm thinking brown suit wolverine and he basically went through a bunch of different mayfaxes he went through the comic blue and red spider-man um he said that's getting a reissue uh but we still got that here in the states and he did say in japan is actually sold out which is crazy mayfax is pretty much like they're domestic over there so they're getting a reissue on that hush batman had a reissue which i already got it and when i got it, it was a reissue a year ago so i knew that was probably pretty much out in the water they're not doing that one again he also said Blue and yellow Jim Lee Cyclops, blue and yellow Wolverine will not uh, be going up for uh, for reissue again either. But the one and only thing that I cared about is he said that that brown and yellow Wolverine will be going back up strongly for a reissue this summer. And when it goes up, I'll be there to get to. I am totally fine with Marvel Legends Wolverines. But it's something about that brown and yellow. It's something about that head scope from Mayfax. I just got to have it as like a one-off set. Wolverine, I got to have it. I don't know why I missed out on it. The claws look beautiful. They're nice and bold. His head scope looks 
fucking fantastic. His uniform looks great, and I know he moves great as a Mayfax, man. So, that is going up for reissue uh, this summer, sometime in July. So, if you are hungry for that Wolverine like I am and missed out on it, that brown suit Wolverine from Mayfax, it will be up for reissue. Finally! Because motherfuckers is charging 300 for that, and I can't go for that. No, oh, oh, no. No, can't do. All right, let's talk about uh, Jada Toys Street Fighter. Uh, is it called Player 2 or Variant 2 or I, 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 whatever their variants for the Street Fighter toys? And at first, out the gate, I'm like, oh yeah, Ken, I, I, I gotta get Ken. You know what I'm saying? And then plus his name is Violent Ken. Uh, it, who, who like old Violent Ken? Like that's even better than Evil Ryu. He had a little edge to him. He was from America. And Violent Ken, that's a Ken that'll kick you in your chest and then pop you with shit. Violent Ken. Break yourself, nigga. Break yourself. He looks good. Um, I like his whited out eyes. Um, I also like the accessories that come with it, the broken barrel. I think that looks pretty dope. And, and it's definitely uh, one of those variants, or they, I guess they call it player too. But it's like when you like get a get like a alt. Like uh, Ryu has one now that I was actually interested in getting the gray with the blue. It's very subtle, but if you know, you know. And then also it, it's a cool different color to, uh, way on it. And it looks like with these, they stepped it up a notch and added more accessories. And the reason why I didn't want to get Fei Long because it's not too much uh, too much difference on him. He's very, very subtle. If you played Street Fighter the game back in the day, he wouldn't have a bright yellow pants that he would switch to. It'll kind of kind of just switch up with the shades. If, as I, I can remember from the Street Fighter 2 Turbo back in 1992. Uh, but what he does have, what I had to pay attention to, I'm like, oh, Shit, they're giving you all the hands I said they, they should have gave him. So he's getting extra Kung Fu hands to do his thing. And that is uh that is pretty cool right there, man. That definitely makes it worth it. Uh, definitely has a second uh, head scope on there. And then also, you get Chung Li. Uh, which, when I started looking at her, I'm like, damn, I actually kind of almost like that one better than the original. Which I'll still get the original in the blue and yellow. But this kind of has more of like a pink reddish vibe going on and then also she gets both her special effects she doesn't also get the kick but she also gets the ovary blast and that's what we used to call it an ovary blast I feel like that's what she was bringing it from eh? and that's the noise she used to make eh? so uh basically you get that with it man and, and it's enough it's enough bang for a buck on these three variants for me to definitely uh get them man I, I think they're pretty cool don't know when they're coming out they just kind of popped up on the internet man so i thought they were cool enough especially violent ken you got to, you got to get violent like ken uh i thought he was pretty cool man so whenever they come up uh i'll make sure i keep an eye out for him break yourself nigga break yourself welcome everybody welcome to another episode of gi joe is G.I. Joe. This week on G.I. Joe is G.I. Joe. Um, we're going to be talking about two topics that I just basically want to talk about. I'm not going to do a bunch of pictures or anything like that. Like I said, it varies. Um, whatever I feel like uh, is a juicy uh, t uh, subject or something good for G.I. Joe, and especially classified, we're going to talk about it. And we got two topics. First, we're going to talk about the code name unlocks that the uh, Full Force uh, podcast uh, unlocked. The figures that's coming out this year and the code names that I guess they'll have with their uh, little codes that they that they come with when you the DCPIs or whatever it is uh, so we'll talk about that and this year looks like we got like 30 something figures versus last year was like 60 something so half the figures hopefully double the quality uh, and kind of double up from last year and then we're gonna talk about Image Comics Duke which is a phenomenal book that's it that's it I love it but let's go through the uh, codes first and I'm gonna have my phone because it that's that's just too much shit for me to try to remember all these little names and the things beside them so you guys can uh, have something uh, to look out for and I guess these are the code names to kind of look for I guess when you're looking for those DCPIs or whatever those codes that come from the back but it has a code that says Shaggy Vet and that's the Techno Viper uh, Frankenstein DLX that's the actual Raptor figure and most of these figures we already knew they were coming man I guess I guess it's just proof I've never really been into this shit but I, I, I guess to a certain extent it helps people out and I guess comforts people <laughs> at night but the Cobra Fair is a Scooby Vet and that's I guess vehicle okay Shaggy Vet okay SMS Techno Fire okay Vet <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about vet, vet, vet. That's vehicle. Okay. See, that's that's what I told you. I don't I don't care about this shit, man. Like y'all got me up here looking crazy and shit. Uh, but pretty much Daphne DLX. That's a deluxe. That's that Star Duster. Don't know too much about him, but he looks looks pretty cool. Um, Nemesis Immortal. That's Atlas DLX. And I wonder if these are gonna be uh San Diego Comic Con. 
uh, like deluxes or just regular uh, deluxes. Um, far as Cobra Commander on the retro side, Retro Casey, Retro Tudor, Snow Serpent, so definitely All Star, Retro All Star Cobra Eels, and then we got a Retro Brainy Beachhead. So uh, two figures that people were kind of looking forward to, definitely the Eels. So that's definitely official. They're definitely on the way. Probably already made and probably being packaged right now, to be honest with you. And the Snow Serpent being kind of kind of slimmed down a little bit so it doesn't have that hefty price and you can army build with them. So I'm guessing they're going to be on the $24.99 scale. And then we got an Astro, which is Night Creeper, and Jane, which is Dreadnought Torch. I think I, I missed a few in there, oh, like Naga Hide and the uh, board that's a Muttley, uh, Muttley pet. So, you know, these little names, man. So... Basically, my whole biggest thing is it's half the figures, pretty much. I think it was like 33, 35, I counted, uh, that, that, uh, that's coming out. That's pretty much half the production rate of what came out last year, man. So, hopefully, the quality picked up. I know every figure I, I held in my hand uh, has been top-notch, man. Top, top, top-notch. Um, besides the weapons, but the weapons even got a little bit better. Um, G.I. Joe continues to kill it. One thing I, I just... You know, I, I don't really have to even say it no more. Only, on, only time I have to really kind of start co uh, making comments on the quality when shit starts going downhill. And downhill for real. Not like a wave or bump in the road, but like everything is garbage, trash. They don't care no more. So, but for the most part, let's enjoy uh, collectors. We got a lot of cool figures coming out. I think that uh, Naga Hide with the boar, I think that's going to be a rock star. Uh, they have no choice but to make that figure a rock star. So, uh, we'll definitely, we'll definitely go and see. All right, for the main event, the juicy, juicy, uh, juicy, uh, end of G.I. Joe is G.I. Joe is the Image Comics Duke book. Um, I haven't been taken back by a comic book in a long time, and this comic book has taken me back, taken me back, Cal gone, take me away. This Duke is amazing, and I like the way Image is going with the story of uh, telling. I like the way uh, they're using the characters, and it's basically the Energon universe. It's like EU. You see that little stamp up in the top left on the Image comic, and uh, basically mixing the Transformers with uh, with the GI Joes. And from this Duke book, um, I think this Duke book could be good. I think Duke uh, could actually be like Cyclops for me. I didn't care anything about Cyclops in the '90s, but I actually like Cyclops now as an older man and this might uh turn Duke around from being such a, a jackass I mean not a jackass an asshole uh he's definitely not a jackass he's a man of action uh that's what he is and this comic book shows it I get uh Captain America Civil War vibes off this comic book um it's a toy uh, it's a story of um uh pretty much Duke uh is in a fighter jet and he sees uh I believe Starscream up there um, or one of the jet uh, transformers and uh, gets his plane blown up or his friend gets his plane blown up and the government does not believe him it starts off with him sitting inside General Hawk's office and Hawk looks just like the classified figure which is fucking dope and a lot of the, uh, the I can tell they're playing off the class uh, classified line and of course it's Hasbro Hasbro has a stamp on the combo but let you know like hey this is Hasbro and they're almost this is cool this is almost kind of like some back in the day shit cross reference between toys and books you know Hasbro letting you know they're present like yeah you know we do own G.I. Joe then yeah you know these do like the classifiers that you buy you know that right and we're basing it off that and what a cool thing about this book is and what a, I think uh, they're doing it it's almost like they're kind of restarting the G.I. Joe timeline because Hawk wants him to continue his mission uh, in the military and kind of press on but Duke is like I know I'm not tripping I know I've seen a robotic uh, airplane up there who killed my friend you guys are tripping. So it shows another part of Duke where he's kind of like Captain America. He's like out of the army. He's got a big, a shaggy beard. He's got a long bob haircut. This, this shit is dope. He goes to like a meeting, uh, which pretty much has people who've seen aliens. Never actually talking about the Transformers and everybody thinks it's crazy. He gets a secret mission uh, from a lady who holds uh, the meetings for the sighting. She wanted Duke to come there because she read about him. Duke goes uh, to this place, which is basically Destro's place, and Destro's not a part of Cobra Commander. Everything is fresh and new. That's what I like about it. But Destro's in, in, in they Duke sneaks into Destro's factory and he sees he's building like his tanks and all this shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, and Destro just strictly on some businessman shit in that man. But a lot of blood. Not a lot of blood, but people get shot up and people die in it, man. And it's got a great story. The story is gritty. The story is 
it, storytelling is amazing. The artwork is amazing. The cover I got almost kind of looks like some Frank Miller shit, yo. It, it looks pretty dope. Dude was kind of wide head, you know, kind of like a Noor type look to him, man. And I'm really feeling it. Now, I picked up uh, Boy Rivals um, this past summer. I thought it was cool to introduce that because I believe uh, Fire, uh, Jetfire was in that one. Uh, Cause I'm not a huge Transformer guy, so forgive me if I don't get their names right. But it was kind of showing like, uh, you know, kind of the two worlds mixing. But I was like, okay, I'll get it. The next thing you know, two or three months went by, and I, I still ain't picked up Void Rivals uh, two. This Duke book, January 31st, I will be there to get issue number two. I will be there. Um, great book, great book. And what it looks like uh, two is also going to split it up too, and that's great. G.I. Joe is pretty much like a Marvel Universe. You have so many characters that you can, I wouldn't necessarily say spread it thin, but Stalker could have his own book. Rock and Roll could have his own book. Uh, maybe not everybody, but some, some good characters, some good key characters can have their own books. And it looks like Cobra Commander is getting his own book too, kind of showing his backdrop, man. So everything is fresh and new. I believe that from what I've read, and this dude looks like everything's restarting, I need to get the Transformers. Uh, number one book because I heard Duke do some nice shit in that too and uh, it's just a great way great great literature I hope young guys pick this up man and, and kind of spark their interest in G.I. Joe I know Transformers can really help spark interest in G.I. Joe because it seems like Transformers still kind of has a young uh, fan base and I think that's what Hasbro is trying to do is trying to marry them with Transformers to kind of help G.I. Joe limp into this next century man and, and keep the lore of G.I. Joe going but with these books they're doing it the damn right way they're starting off right way and of course from books comes movies and if movies can go after this duke story right here alone already that that shit that's that's that shit that shit that shit would be good it, it'll, it'll sell out like forget about snake eyes and that's what they trying to do they keep they keep trying to go to the to their goodie bag with snake eyes man snake eyes is so mythological mythological that he could be in the background and, and he'll sell you tickets he could have a scene with him in there for three or four minutes and he'll, he'll probably sell you a hundred thousand tickets alone just off snake eyes but the story the main meat and potatoes the essence of gi joe is in this duke number one and it's pretty dope and everybody looks like stalker he looks like the gi joe classified stalker in the end on the splash page rock and roll looks like the gi joe classified rock and roll and if you haven't picked this up please grab this this is duke number one right here dope ass book dope 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 book so if you haven't picked it up pick this up Duke number one, issue number two will be out uh, January 31st, man. Good reading, good reading. I was actually taken back by this comic. This, this, this is my G.I. Joe comic right here. I've never got into Marvel comics or the uh, the IDW stuff like that, but so this image right here, this this is where I begin with G.I. Joe comics. I still might collect the old Marvel ones just, just for the... Uh, just just for the lore of it but this is different this isn't slapstick this is real life shit this is real this is real this is real top dog type shit man but we're gonna leave it at that man um i'm glad you can guys come check out check me out man this is a savage land this is another episode of gi joe is gi joe and the soapbox uh we do this for the love and beauty of action figures that's where it starts at that's the basis of this if you can give me a like comment subscribe and if you can hit me at my instagram at geppetto910 and with that being said until the next time god bless